Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Arjuna De Costa and in this video I will be talking about the different types of DNA damage. This is a two part video where I will be uh, covering uh, different types of DNA damage. In the previous video we saw about the important concepts of uh, genotoxicology and uh, what are some of the things that are uh, important to understand when it comes to the terms that are involved in uh, genotoxicity, mutagenicity as well as carcinogenicity. So to begin with the different types of DNA damage, uh, it is important to understand that there are a number of chemicals that can actually cause uh, damage to DNA in different different forms and uh, these chemicals can be uh, of different, uh, these uh, chemicals can do different things, uh, that is they can uh, damage the bases, they can damage the structure of the DNA. Uh, and uh, so many other things that so they according to the type of damage that they do they can be classified into DNA micro lesions or DNA macro lesions so DNA micro lesions occur at the nucleotide level which are uh, non visible alterations and DNA macro lesions would be involving uh, the chromosomal structures where the, there'll be some type of breakage that will be happening and maybe interchange of the uh, these uh, these fragments uh, or degradation of these fragments also. So these will be referred to as DNA macro lesions. So you can see here uh, under DNA micro lesions that uh, they can, uh, these certain chemicals can induce changes in the nucleotides. And you can see here that I've mentioned uh, three uh, types of uh, nucleotide changes. The first one is base substitution, the uh, second one is base insertion and the third one is base deletion. Now, if you look at the original sequence of the DNA, you can see what happens in case of base substitution where a base that is thymine has been substituted for uh, cytosine. And you can see that this the, the codon has changed its meaning. So if this particular codon would be specifying one type of amino acid, if there's a change in this, uh, this particular codon could probably specify an other another type of amino acid, which is not supposed to be doing it in the uh, actual original sequence. So when this happens, uh, another amino acid will be specified over here and as a result, it will change the meaning of the protein or the protein would be an altered protein that would be formed, uh, which would not be able to function properly or would uh, probably be degrade, uh, degraded uh, because it is altered. In the second case, you can see the base insertion where a base has been incorporated into the DNA probably during a replication and uh, you can see that it has inserted itself in between this uh, thymine and adenine and you can uh, then see how this adenine has moved to the next uh, reading frame. Okay, And uh, then this would obviously specify for another amino acid, this would specify for another amino acid, this would specify for another amino acid and so on and so forth. So when such things happen, you can see that the rest of the amino acids are going to be uh, uh, the, the, the not the correctly specified amino acids. It will re uh, obviously result in a completely altered protein and probably that protein would not be functional at all. So when such a thing happens, it sh if the reading frame has shifted, we refer to these types of mutations as frame shift mutations. Uh, so similarly, even in case of base deletion, where you can see the thymine has gotten deleted, the other, uh, the other nucleotides come closer together to complete the reading frame and then obviously this would specify for another amino acid, uh, this would specify for another amino acid and so on and so forth. This again can also be considered as a frame shift mutation. In case of base substitution, we do not get a frame shift mutation because a base is substituted for another base and uh, only one at one particular point you will get a, a, a change in the amino acid and uh, it doesn't change the reading frame of the others. So uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, all of these are referred to as point mutations because at a single point, uh, that is at a single base or a nu single nucleotide, there was a change which took place. Then we have a, a, a other different types of DNA damage. Uh, the, another one is deep urination, where you can see that in a nucleotide, the a nucleotide is composed of uh, sugar or phosphate and its base. And in case of deep urination, it's basically the removal of a uh, base. You can have deep urination and deep pyrimidination also. So deep urination involves the removal of the base from the nucleotide. And uh, that would then give us an A basic uh, nucleotide. Uh, uh, yeah. So there would be the removal, like you can see in the example, the guanine has been removed out from the nucleotide. And what we get in the end is just uh, uh, the sugar and the phosphate without a base. So this uh, refers to an apurinic site in the DNA 
and when that happens it can lead to problems in you know further replication and even dna expression as well the next type of dna damage is dna alkylation which is uh, basically the addition of an alkyl group onto a uh, base and uh, here one example that is given is that of uh, ems that is ethyl methane sulfonate uh, this is a chemical in which uh, an alkyl group you can see here an alkyl group can be uh, donated onto guanine and when this happens it changes the structure of guanine in such a way that now uh, it forms something called as o6 ethyl guanine and this particular uh, base o6 ethyl guanine when it uh, when the dna has to go in for replication the next time this o6 ethyl guanine will miss pair with thymine when guanine is actually supposed to be pairing with cytosine you can see o6 ethyl guanine has paired with thymine so such a mutation where uh, one purine has been converted into another type of a purine uh, that causes it to uh, miss pair with uh, another pyrimidine that is referred to as a transition mutation okay so you can see a transition mutation which has taken place over here uh, the next type of damage is the damage brought about by base analogs so base analogs are basically the chemicals or the yeah the compounds which resemble the structures of uh, of uh, the bases so you can see there's one example of 5 bromouracil which resembles thymine you can see how closely it resembles. So there are two forms of 5-bromouracil, the keto form and the enol form. Now, 5-bromouracil, uh, if it is incorporated into DNA, it can uh, pair with adenine. The, the keto form pairs with adenine just as in case of uh, normally how thymine can pair with adenine. But the enol form uh, mispairs with guanine. The enol form mispairs with guanine. So when this can happen, it can happen when 5-bromouracil uh, is incorporated into dividing cells. And then during the process of replication, such types of mispairing can take place. Uh, then the next type of uh, damage that we can see is uh, deamination that is brought about by certain chemicals like nitrous acid. And nitrous acid, it can actually remove out uh, the amino group of the bases. So if you see nitrous acid, it can deaminate uh, guanine to form xanthine. And uh, xanthine pairs with cytosine just like uh, guanine can pair with cytosine. So it is not any type of uh, uh, mutation as such which has taken pl uh, place over here. But still xanthine is not a correct uh, base to be incorporated. So if xanthine is there in the reading frame of uh, you know the, the, the DNA, uh, if it is coding for something then uh, probably uh, you know the, the mRNA would not be able to be synthesized properly. Then uh, cytosine if it is deaminated it forms uracil. And here this uracil is going to be found in DNA when it's actually supposed to be found in RNA. It is uh, going to be present in DNA and uracil will miss pair with adenine. And you can see that in case of adenine, when adenine is going to be uh, uh, deaminated, it is going to form uh, another compound called hypoxanthin, which again miss pairs with cytosine. Okay, so you can see how these mutations uh, take place because of uh, um, certain deaminating compounds like nitrous acid and yeah and then the next one is hydroxylation so hydroxylation is basically the addition of a hydroxyl group onto a base and uh, that again can cause mispairing to take place so an example given over here is that of hydroxylamine which adds a hydroxyl group onto cytosine and where cytosine is actually supposed to be pairing with the uh, guanine uh, this compound now which is having the hydroxyl group that is hydroxyl amino cytosine mispairs with adenine yeah and uh, the next type of dna damage is that of dimer formation so dimer formation is, uh, occurs uh, especially in the presence of uh, uv light so uv light which comes from sunlight or which comes from uh, in certain uh, uh, electronic applications like for example the lamina flow hood if the uv light is on uh, this uv what it does is that it can cause um, uh, covalent bonds to form between successive thymine bases or successive pyrimidine bases okay so when this occurs it brings the thymine bases very very close to each other such that it can cause a sort of like a distortion or a kink to form in the uh, in the in the dna in the sing in the sing in a single strand of dna so when this kink occurs in the dna it leads to a kind of distortion of the dna and uh, the structure of the dna becomes uh, very much unstable and uh, this can also lead to problems for uh, replication and it can even lead to problems of uh, transcription later on uh, 
The next type of DNA damage is that which is brought about by uh, DNA intercalating agents. So DNA intercalation refers to uh, the insertion of some large molecules in between the bases, between the successive base pairs, I would say, of uh, DNA. So you can see this uh, ethereum bromide is a very popular stain that is used in molecular biology. Uh, uh, that is used to stain DNA. So the mechanism of action of ethereum bromide is that it inserts itself in between the bases of base pairs of DNA, and that, uh, that's when uh, when uh, UV light is incident upon it, we get a sort of like a fluorescence uh, from it. So, but under normal circumstances, if we are exposed to ethereum bromide, if ethereum bromide falls on our bare skin, it can actually be absorbed by our skin and can be incorporated into the uh, DNA. So when this happens, our DNA can actually become distorted. As you can see, the normal density of the DNA, you can see the, the density of the DNA gets lowered with the uh, uh, insertion of uh, ethereum bromide in between the uh, base pairs. Okay? And uh, this can lead to a lot of problems with replication, with transcription, uh, and obviously then uh, with translation, because if the mRNA is not going to be synthesized properly, it is going to not, uh, there won't be any proper translation being taken place as well. So you can see whenever you are handling uh, these uh, chemicals like ethereum bromide, it's, it's, you have to take utmost care to always wear gloves because this ethereum bromide can be absorbed by your skin and it can be incorporated into your DNA where it can cause DNA damage. Thank you.